In this video, we will look at stop limit orders. I will show you how to configure them and verify the maker taker status. We will also talk about which configurations should be avoided. Before we begin, I want to congratulate those of you who have made it this far in the series. After developing an understanding of the previous order types, market, limit, and stop, you now have the know-how to understand how stop limit orders work. Stop limit orders combine the concepts we saw with limit orders and with plain stop orders. Stop limit orders are delayed limit orders. Once the trigger condition registers as true, a limit order is dispatched to the order book. When the matching engine receives the limit order, the order is matched in the same way as we saw in the limit orders videos. Stop limit orders are tough to understand because there are 16 different possibilities when setting them up. We identified these 16 possibilities by firstly laying out the parameters that affect the order execution behavior and then by looking at the set of permutations that are generated by these parameters, by varying the values these parameters can take. Stop limit orders have four parameters that affect their behavior. The side of the order, that can be buy or sell. The limit price location on the book, that can be on the buy side or the sell side. The stop price location on the book, that can be on the buy side or on the sell side as well. And then the fourth parameter is the stop price location compared to the limit price. The stop price can be higher than the limit price or the stop price can be lower than the limit price. Out of the 16 possible stop limit order configurations, eight of these are sell side configurations and the other eight are buy side configurations. Out of the 16 possibilities, there are two practical configurations. One practical configuration is on the buy side and the other is on the sell side. Since we already have the knowledge needed to understand how these stop limit orders will behave when submitted, you may want to try and determine the maker taker status of each of these configurations as well as whether or not you think the particular configuration is practical. Do this on your own if you want to and then check at the end of the video to see the answers. Remember that stop limit orders are just delayed limit orders which means that a limit order will be dispatched to the order book after the trigger condition registers as true. For the stop limit orders that are practical, the trigger condition should register as true at some future point in time and not immediately. If the order is triggered immediately, the stop is really useless and we should just use a plain limit order instead of a stop limit order. As a result, any stop limit order configurations that are triggered right away are not going to be practical. The trick to understanding the execution behavior of stop limit orders is to be able to estimate how the book will look in the future when the trigger condition registers as true. The limit price location on this future book determines the maker taker status of the stop limit order when it is ultimately filled. And what we have learned in the limit orders as makers and as takers videos gives us the information we need to make this determination. Once we understand how limit orders behave, we just need to be able to visualize what the order book needs to look like for the stop order to be triggered. To do this, just keep the trigger condition in mind and imagine gradually changing the order book until the condition registers as true. Then apply the logic we saw in the limit orders videos, then you've got it. You understand how stop limit orders behave when first submitted and then when triggered. In this video, we're going to demonstrate and discuss the two practical configurations. So let's get to it. We will tackle each of these one by one. Let's jump to GDAX. We'll start with the practical sell side configuration. This particular configuration has the following parameter values. A limit price on the buy side of the order book under the market price, a stop price on the buy side of the order book, 
and a stop price that is higher than the limit price. Let's verify that these are indeed the specifications we have set up in our order form. We have stop selected. We are on the sell side. We'll work with the minimum amount of ETH allowed, which at the current moment is 0.01 ETH. We'll choose a stop price on the buy side of the order book. We'll go with 1000 for this example. We'll choose a limit price on the buy side of the order book as well, and we'll go with 990. This gives us a stop price that is indeed higher than our limit price. The two questions that we need to ask ourselves to understand the behavior of this order when we submit it is number one, when will the stop be triggered? And number two, when and where will this order be filled? Now the stop price determines when the stop will be triggered and the limit price determines when and where the order will be filled. So let's just place this order and then discuss what we see. I'm going to click place sell order. We get our warning and we'll just click place order. Three, 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 two, 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 one, 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 one. one. And we see success and our stop order in the open order section. We can tell that the stop has not triggered because of the red badge on the left that says stop at 1000. And in the price column, we see our limit price instead of what we saw before, which was MKT, meaning market. This was what we saw with plain stop orders. Now we see our limit price. Since this order is in a stopped state, we will just have to reason about its behavior in the future. Let's tackle the first question. When will the stop be triggered? For sell orders, the stop is triggered when the last trading price is at or below our stop price. This means that ETH would need to trade down from here to about 1,000 our stop price before the order is triggered. At this future time, the order will be triggered and a limit order will be dispatched to the order book. The key to understanding what happens next is to know what has to happen to the order book for this lower price of 1000 to be reached. The market price must move down to 1000 and a trade must occur at or below 1000. At this time, our sell side limit order will be dispatched to the order book. Since the highest bidding price should be above our minimum of 990, that's our limit price, there should be an order on the order book above 990 that the matching engine can take from the book to fill our order. This means that the limit order will behave just like the sell side limit orders that we saw in the limit orders as takers video. This gives us the answer to our second question, when and where will our order be filled? our order will be filled immediately at the highest bidding price as long as the highest bid is at or above our limit price. And this is what we want if we need to get an execution. This is why this configuration is practical for sell side stop limit orders. It would be possible to move our limit price above the stop price, but this wouldn't be practical because our limit order would just post to the book on the sell side in this scenario. Yes, in this case, the order would be a maker, but the price must rise before a taker would be willing to match with our order. And if the price keeps falling from this point, our order would be stuck on the book. So with this information, we can go ahead and conclude what we need for sell side stop limit orders. We need to place the limit price below the stop price. This is because we want there to be some bids in between the gap above our limit price because our limit price for sell side limit orders is the minimum and we need to get an execution. If we have a gap in between our stop price and our limit price and our limit price is below the stop price, then there should be some bids in that gap. This is not a guarantee. And that's one of the reasons that stop orders and stop limit orders are dangerous because there's no guarantees on what the order book will look like at the time our particular order reaches the book. Now let's go ahead and look at the buy side stop limit order configuration that is also practical. We have stop selected. We are on the buy side. We'll choose to work with 10 USD, which is the current minimum when you're dealing in USD. We'll choose a stop price on the sell side of the order book. We'll go with 1100 for this example. 
we'll choose a limit price on the sell side of the order book as well and we'll go with 1170 in this particular case this gives us a stop price that is lower than the limit price let's place this order and then discuss what we see we'll click place by order so we just got an error indicating that the minimum was actually 0 0.01 ETH. And so what I did here to continue this demo is to increase the amount from 10 USD to 20 USD, which will get us over that hump that we need for that 0 0.01 ETH. We'll go ahead and place this order. We get the warning and we'll click place order. Three, 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 three two, 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 one, 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 one. Now we can see our stop order is in the open order section. So this scenario is just like what we saw before. We have an open stop limit order that has not been triggered. We can tell that it has not been triggered because of the green badge that says stop at 1100. Now the price, just like we saw before, is our limit price. So when we worked with plain stop orders, that price said MKT indicating that the price was market. Now the price says 1170. The logic for this one is symmetric to the logic of the sell side stop limit we just looked at. The market price must move up to our stop price and a trade must occur at or above our stop price for this order to be triggered. When the trigger trade occurs, it's likely but not a certainty that the lowest asking price will be below our limit price. That's our maximum. As such, the order matching engine will take from the book at the lowest asking price to fill our buy order. Just like in the last scenario, we could imagine what would happen if we flipped our stop in our limit. So if we put our stop above our limit price. Now this would be possible, but it wouldn't be practical. And this is because the lowest asking price would be higher than our maximum when the stop is triggered. Yes, our order would post to the order book as a maker but the price would be required to fall for our order to be filled and for this reason it's not practical to put the stop price above the limit price for buy side stop limit orders so what we have seen is that in both of the practical scenarios for stop limit orders that's on the buy side and on the sell side the orders will fill as takers and incur a fee. This is the price that we have to pay to ensure that we get a fill. This decision that we make, we actually make it on every trade. This decision is to be or not to be a taker. The taker fee is currently 0.25%, but the price can easily move against us by that much, requiring us to chase the price higher or lower. If this occurs, then our efforts are in vain and we would be better off to just pay the fee to start with. So we have to keep that in mind when we are deciding whether or not we're going to be a taker on any trade. With stop limit orders, we're gonna to wanna to be takers because we need to get out because these trades are automated. We aren't sitting in front of the screen making the decision ourselves. So if we want the trade to occur after our stop is triggered, we need to make sure that there are matches on the book that we can take from the book in order to get a fill. Let's go ahead and jump to our spreadsheet and fill in these details. We have just seen which of these configurations are practical and we discussed a couple that failed to be practical. These two permutations are the practical ones and they are takers. All of the other permutations fail to be practical. If you're interested, give each one a go and see if you can figure out why each of these don't make sense. Some of them are makers and some of them are takers. You're gonna notice the star next to the maker taker value in the spreadsheet here. This star indicates that the order should, and I say should, be whatever the value indicates. With stop orders, there are no guarantees. Although it's uncommon, the order book can change rapidly between the time that the stop is triggered and the market or limit order reaches the order book. This is precisely why we prefer to use stop limit orders over plain stop orders. We need the control that the limit gives us to protect ourselves in these rare events when the markets are moving so fast that it's hard to predict predict what the order book will look like when our order reaches the book.